Today we're going to build this freestanding wardrobe, closet, clothing rack thing. I'm for us. So I'm not building this thing for myself to keep, but after it was done and I was staging it, I realized that I could totally get by with something like this. And I'm sure I'm not alone. And by that I mean, I have a decent collection of clothes in my closet, but I pretty much wear the same 10 t-shirts and two pairs of jeans over and over. Of course, there's always underwear and socks and gym shorts, etc. But I keep those in a dresser, so I mean it. I could definitely give my half of the closet to my wife and get by with just this. Could being the optimal word there. Anyhow, after I was done breaking down and milling all of my wood, I could start cutting out my pieces. But actually, before I do that, let's talk about how this thing's going to come together. So it's made out of a surprisingly small amount of wood. Four tapered pieces, a couple of pieces of plywood, and a one-inch dowel. These legs are going to go from one inch wide at the bottom to one and three quarters of an inch wide at the top. And they lean in at a six degree angle. So back in the real world, the first thing that I did was set these bevel gauges to six degrees off of 90. I have two of them, so one is acute and the other is obtuse. Then I just locked them down and left them there for the entirety of this project. And it ended up being really useful, so something I'll do in the future. Here I'm marking the angle of the foot on one end of the board. Next I measured in one inch, and that will become the bottom of the leg. Then I measured out the length that I wanted the leg to be, marked another six degree angle out, and then marked one and three quarters of an inch that I wanted the top of the leg to be. I didn't have a ruler or straight edge that was long enough to connect the dots, so I used a long piece of plywood that I had laying around. And then I just went over to the bandsaw and made sure to stay on the outside of the line. After I had the first one cut out, I refined the piece with some sanding to get it right down to the line, and then this became the template for making the other three leg pieces. So once I was happy with it, I roughed out the other legs on the bandsaw, and then used a template routing bit to make the other three identical. At this point, the legs were still longer than what they needed to be, so over the table saw I set my miter gauge to 6 degrees and cut off the tops of each of the legs. Then I adjusted the gauge to be 6 degrees in the opposite direction and cut the bottoms of each leg. And this brought them to what would be pretty much their final size. Now as I said earlier, these bevel gauges came in super handy on this project, but here's an instance of me over relying on them. So the way that these are going to join together is that each leg is going to get a flat spot cut onto it. And then those faces, or flat spots, will mate together. In my head, I thought that I could mark this out with the bevel gauge, but like you can see in this recreation here, cutting that angle on it isn't what you want. It won't come out right. So what you really want to do is mark and cut a line that's perpendicular to the top angle. So it's actually easier than what I'm doing here. Anyhow, in these next shots, you're going to see me doing all the right things, just at the wrong angle. So basically, I just had to remove more material after the fact, repeating each step. Alright, so with my line marked, next I scored a line on the outside of the mark, and then used the chisel to widen that line, or the score. And basically, I'm creating a groove that my pool saw can get into, that I can cut parallel to the mark. Then to finish the shape, I used my edge sander to get right up to the line. And once all four pieces were done, I could glue them together. With the legs dry enough, I could start thinking about how I was going to attach the lower shelves to the piece. My first idea was to just cut a series of dados, but I was just bored or wanted to try something new for whatever reason, so I had the idea to make these little wedge pieces as shelf rests instead, which several people guessed were the world's smallest stilts when I posted a teaser pic on Instagram. After I'd finished marking where the shelves would go, I took some scrap walnut that I had laying around and cut off a little piece. Thank you. 
Then I tilted my blade to 15 degrees to make a long wedge strip that I could cut into several smaller wedges after I tilted the blade back upright. And then finally I glued them on, waited for them to dry, and then flush trimmed them as well. Next I had to work out how I was going to insert the hanger rod, and I wish that I could say that this was easy, but you need a lot of equipment to get this done. So I used a drill press, a Festool track saw in the sustainer, a can of my absolute favorite finish, Simple Finish by Maker Branco two pieces of walnut scrap, and a Rockler bench cookie. And all of this stacked should be about the same height as your drill press, so that you can balance the non-business end of your legs while you're doing your drilling. And then to actually drill, all you need is a one inch Forstner bit. Easy peasy. The last thing I had to do before putting it all together was make a couple of shelves. And these are the same sort of plywood with hardwood edging shelves that you guys have seen me use plenty of times. So while I'm doing that, I'd like to thank Mac Weldon for sponsoring this video. So right now you can go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your order when you use the promo code 4 eyes. And here's why you should. I've been wearing their shirts, socks, pants, shorts, and underwear for the past 6 months now. Not the same pair, I've changed them. And simply put, they're the most comfortable shirts, socks, pants, shorts, and underwear that I've ever owned. And they're a great fit too. So whether you're relaxing in one of their shirts over at the table saw, or working up a sweat in some shorts by joining some six-quarter walnut, or at the gym or whatever, you're going to feel great and look like 153 Bitcoin. Oh, and bonus points for the fact that thanks to these shorts, now I finally have somewhere to put my camera lens while I'm recording. Anyhow, so check them out for yourself by visiting MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your order. Alright, thanks MacWeldon. Special thanks to Mike Wascom, Anthony Biancardi, Chung Ostrander, Eddie Villa, Ryan Gilmore, and the rest of my Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. You are the ones that are keeping food on my plate, a roof over my head, and clothes on my freestanding closet wardrobe thing. Without you, I'd be naked, and nobody wants to see that. No, but seriously, thank you. Really. And if you want to find out how you can support the show too, check out the Patreon link in the description to see if it's right for you. And as always, no pressure. Alright, thanks for watching and see you next time.